In the process of solving the question paper that had been asked in JE Main 2019, here we are to solve the paper of evening slot that had been put on 10th April 2019. Hello and welcome to the discussion session. The subject that I am going to take would be physics. All right, let's begin with the question solution then. And the first question that I have here is been brought from thermodynamics and more precisely the kinetic theory of gas part. Look, it says that there's a one mole of ideal gas and that one mole of the gas passes through the process which is given by this. You could see that the pressure and volume is being related by this relationship and clearly P0 and V0 are constant we need to calculate the change in temperature of the gas if its volume changes from V0 to 2V0. Well, nothing can be a better gift than this when it comes to question number one. So this must have certainly elevated your confidence level because it's a very, very straightforward one. Now what you can do is that for volume V0, you calculate the pressure. For volume 2V0, you calculate the pressure. So that's going to be the initial and the final pressure. And then we know that temperature is going to be equals to PV upon NR. And since the number of mole is 1, so I can write T equals to PV upon R. So all is done. You see, the initial volume V0, the corresponding pressure, you can calculate from here. The final volume 2V0, the corresponding pressure, you can calculate it. So you get the initial and the final temperature. I was supposed to calculate the change in temperature, so I need to do T2 minus of T1. So on solving that, you would get option number two as the correct option for this question. A straightforward one, I'd already said, this must have certainly boosted your confidence level. All right, now let's go to the second question. All right, so here is the second question. And that has been, you know, derived from the topic of wave. And specifically, you are getting back-to-back -back question from the second half of the first year syllabus. What I mean to say is that from those topic, which is post-gravitation, we generally tend to call it as the second half. So the first year syllabus, the second half, they are quite important. This is the special message to the future aspirant. See, there are two waves and the two waves are superimposed and the individual waves have frequencies 9 hertz and 11 hertz. So now this is the most appropriate condition for beats to happen. You recall all those required expression and we know that beats would happen when two waves would be superimposing provided the frequencies vary by a slight amount. And we know the beat frequency is 11 minus 9, so that is going to be 2 hertz, the difference in frequency. I think that idea is going to help me out to find out which would be the resultant superimposed graph. And here you could see y versus t, that's a given part. And specifically you can see this, these are the envelopes of the amplitude. I will not be going into that greater detail, but yes, when there is a beat frequency of 2 hertz, so that means there must be two maxima in one second. And the square of the amplitude would be directly proportional to the intensity. So if you do that, in order to get two maxima, two maximum intensity in one second, you could see in all this given option, option number three is leading to that particular answer. The clue, two intensity maximum in one second. And intensity is directly proportional to amplitude square. So that much would be more than sufficient to lead option number three as the correct answer. Fine, now let's move to the next question. Well, question number three from gravitation. Now, it should not be a surprise because back to back questions we are getting after gravitation. And this is a general thing that every aspirant should take care, specifically preparing 
the first year syllabus, a general tendency and a general inclination goes in this way to focus more time on the first half, pre-gravitation. Well, I'm not in against of that. You certainly need to do that. But while doing so, one should not forget to lay emphasis on the portion, on the topics post-gravitation. So here it is, a spaceship orbits around a planet at a height of 20 kilometers from its surface. So this is the height. And distance from the center is, of course, going to be the radius of the planet plus the height. And you could see, assuming that only gravitational field of the planet acts on the spaceship, what will be the number of complete revolutions made by the spaceship in 24 hours? All right, so the idea would be, let me just calculate the time period. And that time period would be the time taken for one complete revolution and 24 hours divided by the time period is going to give me the required parameter which has been asked. And this time the planet is not Earth. You can see the radius is something different, but that hardly matters. Now, you could see here, if I just calculate the orbital speed, so let's see, the orbital speed is going to be under root of g m divided by r plus h, where capital R is the radius and h is the altitude which has been given, 20 kilometer. Okay, now once you get the orbital speed, you can calculate the time period and the time period is going to be 2 pi r plus h divided by the orbital speed. Okay, so you got the time period and we are supposed to calculate the number of revolutions this satellite makes in 24 hours. So that number of revolution, if I denote it by small n, that is going to be 24 hours divided by t. Now here you need to be careful in terms of unit. This is in hours. So whatsoever time period you get, you convert it into hours. You calculate all those things and the answer would come very close to 11. Therefore, out of these given four options, 11 revolutions would be the correct answer leading to option number three. Right, let's now go to the next question.